Hi, ladies. Hey, ladies. Hello, hello, hey. hello. Hey, how y'all doing? Well, well, well. Good, good. The power of renewed energies. You can tell we're all energetic. And my lighting just changed. I think the sun started. Is that y'all? <laughs> like, so I know. That that's okay. I'm listen. putting that. That's you catching my energy. That's the party. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Episode 68. Can y'all believe we're at 68 episodes? The power yes, of renewed energy. So wild. That is so wild. Amazing. Yes, we appreciate our heartbeats. We're going to talk about renewed energy. We are one episode away from our finale. Yes. Oh my goodness. The power person. season is coming to an end, y'all. Yes, it is. And it's still. I really long. appreciate yeah. the season. The season's been amazing. <laughs> yes. How it started, how it's going, yeah. and how it will end, but the power never ends. So let's just say that. Let's we'll put that Power never ends. <laughs> oh, God. okay. I don't want 50 Cent come looking for me. 50, I love you. If you're listening to this, Big we'll tag you. We'll you, credit. <laughs> you know, 50 be trying to collect the check from everybody. He yeah, I know. I don't, know. I don't owe him no money. Care. You don't care. I don't even put me on blast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, my goodness. So today, if y'all are watching this video, my look is inspired by, one, I need to get my hair done. <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> we'll get it done after this. And two, this look is inspired by SBJ uh, Boutique from Raleigh, North Carolina, yes, a young yes. lady named Jasmine. We met her about a year ago mm-hmm. when we did our first meetup May. in person. Oh yeah, May yeah, It was like April 30th, May 1st time frame, and bought these beautiful earrings to go. This is my head scarf because my hair. I'm going to get her bow tie for one of the my bow, You like, said that, Jeanette. Yeah, I think I'm going yeah. to get one. I'm going to order one. My hair was, my hair was like three different textures Thank right you. now. Thank so <laughs> when I took it out this morning, it was like curly and it was all the things. Ends were straight and all these different kinds of things. I don't, yeah. I don't so, think the heartbeats know what you're doing that you're going yeah, Oh after. yes, I know. I am working really hard. <laughs> I'm going to put that out there <laughs> at going natural with my hair. So awesome. I've had braids since December on and off since December. So and November was my last perm or touch up. And then I did, I was doing the braids initially because of all the travel for Miles' basketball and all the kids stuff for Maddie and different things. Mm-hmm. And it's made my life easier. And also too, I'm transitioning back, back to work um, in the office. So it's been, I've been in the office quite a bit and they're starting to bring people back. And so traditionally before the pandemic, you know, I used to have a hair appointment day. Now I work crazy hours. The, the nine to five is now the new eight to eight pretty much. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so I'm just had to make some changes and with working that, out, you love working. Yeah. I love working out. My hair was just doing weird things with the workouts, with the perms, the color. Oh, it was yeah. just like, and I sweat directly in my head where some people don't. That's and how um, Ryan is. Things. She is from the middle. Yes, from the middle. And it was just mm-hmm. doing crazy things with my hair. Hair was shedding and all the things. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get braids for a while, but it's just only going to be while Miles was playing basketball. And then I started loving it even more. And I was like, this is kind of cool. And Maddie, shout out to Maddie, you know, the Hey Maddie series. She loves talking about anything hair. And she tries yes. all the different products and she's tried them on my hair and it's been doing well. Awesome. And so, yeah, Aisha, love you. Thank you so much for the braids and all the things you've been doing but yeah I'm actually as this is recording I'm actually going to get my hair done today so I didn't want to scare y'all coming on here <laughs> so I remembered that I had this headscarf and these earrings and that's where we are today so that's how we got to this moment so that's my renewed energy mm-hmm. for today what's y'all renew energy <laughs> share some for our heartbeats so um just being in front of y'all that's for Yay! me just we being back it. um we we tried to do this episode a few days ago <laughs> and they looked at it took one look at me was like mm, you know we're not gonna do this today we gonna we gonna do something totally different trying to say we're gonna do something fun so we booked our retreat for the heart of chat which is really exciting we did one last mm-hmm. july and it was amazing for the three of us to get together and just have that time together. Um, when we did our photo shoot, y'all seen some of the photos that we've done. Um, and so, yeah, we decided then on that trip that we were going to make that an annual thing for us. So I really am looking forward to, to that. Yes. Awesome. Yes to that. Yeah, what about you? What about you, Shauna? Recently, we had a full moon, what, a week mm. and a half ago. Mm-hmm. And I recognized I love the sun. I'm a sun baby, but I also love the moon. Mm. And they give me different types of renewed energy. Yeah. And 
so the I, I went out there and I I told the ladies on Marco Polo, I'm gonna have a date with the moon tonight. <laughs> so Mia and I went for a walk and we just stood under the moon. And then I came back in and I started writing things that I wanted to manifest in my life. And it was the first time I ever did that under the like under the moonlight. Yeah. And uh, I've already seen some things already moving from what I've written. So that's the way that I renew, I, I use, um, you know, I like to renew my energy. Another way, believe it or not, I love candles. I light yeah. candles every <laughs> single day. I burn candles out quickly. I'm constantly <laughs> at the store buying three to five bottles of candles. It never gets old. Every time I light it, I feel renewed. It never gets old for me. That's awesome. Mm. That's, That's another how, I way. Think everybody in this house loves candles. It's I like, love candles too. Sydney, I don't know if she likes them or she's just like blowing them out, but I had a candle on in my bathroom and I went back in my bathroom and it was out. I was like, girl, if you don't stop blowing my candles out, I think she just enjoys the blowing out the flame. But everybody in this house loves candles to the point where my son had burnt most of my candles and he went and bought me. He said, I bought you some new candles to replace the ones that I burnt. Oh, <laughs> I, I love, love that, that, uh, um, that he loves candles because mm-hmm. usually that's something that, you know, ladies kind of... Mm-hmm. Um, pretty boy mm-hmm. Floyd loves to smell good and he <laughs> loves his room to smell good okay I ain't mad at him he, even got, he him. loves Bath and Body Works because they have a whole men's line in there and then they got those room sprays which mm-hmm. the one that he picked up actually smells really good uh, those are like amazing a smaller bottle but yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Powerful. It, it is it is so he loves for his space to smell good and he loves to smell good so i love that you yeah. maddie is a big bath and body works person to eat too i mean we have mm-hmm. coupons in our wallets like anywhere we go we're bath and body works down i mean it is been a journey i need to get me fun. some more i used to love bath and body works and but i you know life kids whatever you just don't make time for that kind of stuff but i was like dang i want to smell good i want to be a little you know <laughs> some bath and body works remember yeah. last year on our retreat yeah, yeah. oh yes. i got you this year i got you don't worry about yeah. it yeah i have a new i have some new scents for you to try they're amazing uh, mm-hmm. it's another one that i love too now i don't know what they got no more i'm just like they I'm have a lot of new something. stuff they have a lot of new stuff so is it it's uh, yeah yeah, I love it. You just spray it. And you're just like, ah, oh, renewed energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just watching the flame. It's mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. So I know today we're talking about the power of renewed energy, right? But how, let, can we start it off by just saying like how um, people can, I guess, recognize when there is like a lack of energy? Because sometimes we, we think that we're good, right? And we don't recognize signs in ourselves. Um and our external space sometimes shows it like how can you even recognize that you might need to do some of the things that we're going to talk about later to renew your, your energy, um, in different ways. Like, is there, um, times when y'all are just like busy, 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 moving, moving, moving. And then what is it for you that help makes you realize like, oh, maybe I need to take a step back for a second. Yeah, I was gonna. I'm I think dragging. On that. Yeah, I think we touched on it a little bit, Shawna. To your point about just dragging, but maybe you know recognizing the signs. I think Shauna or Jeanette, one of you ladies said this a few episodes ago, maybe just on Marco Polo. You know, are you hungry? Are you tired? Are you snapping at people? Mm-hmm. Those kinds of things, like, are in that top sort of five ways to everybody getting on your nerves everybody's like get on your nerves are you you know are you are you extra like edgy you know in a way that is not your normal self so could it be you know okay rest nothing replaces rest I mean, you you have you have to get the proper rest, yeah. and the proper rest is different for different people. It's seven hours for some people, maybe it's nine and a half for others. So knowing where you fall mm-hmm. in that way is that's like the first thing. Like for me, I know I need at least seven seven and a half hours of sleep every day. If I get eight, if I get nine, my energy is like on ten. Like I know I'm doing well. If I get five or six hours of sleep, I notice that difference in myself. I can't yeah. function like that. So I would say knowing that threshold of the mm-hmm. things that I just mentioned is like a first indicator of where your energy is or is not. Yeah. So what did you say, Sean, your first indicator? One of them was dragging. <laughs> dragging my, my ass uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> is dragging. Mm-hmm. And then I have to go back in my roller deck, roller deck. That's roller deck. <laughs> yeah. And uh, figure out what am I lacking? Uh, what am I missing? Um, did I, am I, uh, my cup of water short today you know uh-huh. what was my meal intake 
Did I eat something that, you know, caused me to drag? Did I yeah. miss a cup of coffee? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, what was my food intake? So I, I look at the basics mm-hmm. first and then make sure that that's all together. And then next I go into some inner work and start like re- reflecting on the past days or weeks Mm -hmm. and so I couldn't understand for example Friday (laughs) Friday I said Saturday I'm sleeping in and I slept Mm -hmm. in ladies and gentlemen till after 10 o'clock a.m that's a serious sleep in for me yes and so um I was like why am I dragging I don't get it what's happening what's going on I'm this I'm that man I started going back in my rolling deck I was 15 days straight just doing nonstop, 15 days straight, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all brand work, all grief work, all oh, family yeah. work, all the things, 15 yeah. straight days with no kind of like real break. Mm-hmm. So it caught up to me. Mm-hmm. I can't party like a rock star like I used to. <laughs> but she's <you're> going to try. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. I'm not stopping right. that. Said, I might, take a, I might need two bed. days to recover, but I'm still yeah. going to I, I feel you. Yeah, for me, I think it's like, and it's not just me, but also like what I recognize is some people that I'm close to is like, um, one is like being disconnected from like people that you normally are connected to. You don't feel like talking to your friends. You don't feel like hanging out. You don't feel like doing nothing. Um, You just kind of are isolating yourself a little bit more than you normally would. And then also I think your space shows it, like it shows up in like like clutter, um, you don't, you're not doing some of the things that you normally do. I know for me, one of them, like, and it's so funny. I just talked to somebody about this was, um, she was like, how is your, how is, um, what is she, how is home cooking for you? And I was like, I've never been asked that as far as like, um, the different areas of your life, how you're feeling in those areas. And she said home cooking. And I was like, home cooking. And I was like, mm-hmm. I said, "Mm, you know what? I haven't really cooked a lot lately um, because I've just been going, going, going. And I realized I was like, because we were talking about like me wanting to like be healthier and get in shape. And if y'all recall, like over the pandemic in 2020, I was cooking all the time because everything was shut down and my body started getting better just because I was cooking at home more. And I was like, oh, you know what? That could be a part of why I'm not feeling the best in my body because I'm not cooking at home a lot. And it's not even that I'm just eating out a lot. Sometimes I might eat once that day. I might eat one meal a day, have some coffee, maybe a couple of snacks, but I ain't having three meals. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh yeah, I probably should be working on that. So mm. I think it shows up in your home life. It shows up in the things that you normally do that you're not doing anymore. And then how you are disconnected or if you are connected with your, your family or friends. I was had a reflection question last week. on How often do you check in on your inner peace? And my response was every hour on the hour. And it's because I felt like we're being pulled in so many different directions right now. And I mentioned this on Marco Polo with the ladies that we're, we're part in the world. We're trying to part and stay at home. We're trying, we're, we're, we're doing our best to work on our inner work and self-care. Mm-hmm. And then you have the whole household management thing. Even whether you have children or not, you're still managing your life. Yeah. And it's a lot. It's a lot right now. Mm-hmm. And even though I feel like they're, they're part of the world has dismissed the pandemic and said it's over to them. <laughs> oh yeah. We really, we really still are in it, <laughs> even mm-hmm. though we want to, we want to behave as if we're not. And uh, the energy is so heavy right now. Yeah. And it's pulling yeah. on everybody everybody is going through something or they know someone that's going through something and we want to help each other, but we are also got to help ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so I, re- I, I came to Marco Polo several times over the last couple of weeks and said, I wanted to do this, but I had to choose me. I wanted to do that, but I had to choose myself, mm-hmm. you know? And I've never really been in that position where I had to really make that hardcore, hard cut line, like, I gotta choose my mental stability right now. I can't help this person with that challenge that they're going through. Oh, Shauna. Yeah. Try to do everything. Everything. Everything, everybody. Yeah, yeah. You you don't have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. 
Yeah, it's definitely exhausting trying to do that. I think one of you ladies also said a few minutes ago about, you know, connecting and mm-hmm. connecting with your inner self. And that that is a form of renewing, I guess, your energy and knowing where those pieces are not being filled in. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, yeah, I'm not getting enough rest or I'm doing too much outside of the home where I need to be kind of focused inside. So we're living in this. I mean, it's a hybrid world. I would say that hybrid is like plural. Yes. Because we're back, the kids are back in sports, right? We're back in the office, but then sometimes we're not in the office. So that pulls right. on you too. And then you're, you have to also do your own self-care. And some of that relies on you going outside of the home to do grocery shop or whatever it might be. So that that's part of it too. And that just, that pulls on your energy. So you do have to make conscious decisions on where you're putting your energy. I was just telling somebody about that, like even like with the whole pandemic and just being back out in this hybrid world. And I can appreciate the world realizing that a lot of things you don't have to do in person and you don't, mm-hmm. everybody's job doesn't have to be in person. Um, but I, like, even though I, I have the flexibility in my job to work from home some days, go in the office when I want to do half a day, leave, go work at the coffee. Like I have that flexibility in my, in my job and I'm very grateful for that i kind of miss 2020 when Mm -hmm. you knew no one was going out Mm -hmm. and it was okay for like y'all know like i spent a lot of days on marco polo on my front porch sipping my coffee in the morning like Mm -hmm. just chilling and everybody was in the house resting and doing whatever um and everybody just kind of started their day naturally like i miss that time that we had in 2020 um because like I, I'm not a person that generally likes to sit still, especially when the rest of the world is moving. I feel this need like, oh, I got the, I'm not doing, I'm doing less if everybody else is moving and I'm not. So mm-hmm. when that happened, it was like, well, nobody is. So it was okay. It was like the permission I needed to allow myself to just be. And I kind of missed that, even though, like y'all said, you still have to hold yourself accountable and check in with yourselves. And now it's just kind of like <clears throat> putting the ownership back on me fully. And I'm like, mm, this is harder than I thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never thought I would be able to sit down. I mean, for years, you know, I've been in the workforce and we were always told, nope, you, you because of your position or what we do, you can never ever work from home. So all of a sudden, 2020 came. You know, I've been in the it workforce. It was manifesting then for years. you, were we, Linda? Yeah, I know. Yes. 30 years in, in person in the workforce, wow. never could work from home because then 2020 hits. It's like, wow, first time ever working from home, like, and having the permission to do so, you know, from Mm -hmm. the powers that be or were. And it's like, wow, that is something else. I got a lot of my energy kind of, I internalized that. And so when it became realistic that, oh yeah, we're going to be going back soon. Like the end of 2021, I was like, Ooh, I got to do everything I can to fill my cup. Because I know, even though, you know, certain things were said and promised, oh, you don't have to, we knew, I knew it was going to change. And so I'm speaking to those people out here who are listening to this, because I know at my company in particular, people are struggling with that and they're upset and they're like, but you told us this and now the company is starting to bring people back. So I kind of started going back in. I did like a soft approach back in like November and I started easing myself back in. So it wouldn't be this shock which again is an energy, energy zapper, you know, because I could easily be taken down the rabbit hole, right? Because I, I got to go back in. So now that I'm going back in, it's not as hard, but I use my days and try to use the, whether it's five minutes or whether it's five hours to pour into myself even more so now, because I'm still hybrid. I may work from home a day or two a week, but three other days I might be in the office. So you know, it's just that transition it, of you two transition. going back and forth. Mm-hmm. Like, it, anybody that's in that position where companies Ooh. are requiring that, they're yeah. taking away more and more of your flexibility. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are moving yeah. out of state. They're moving out the country. Mm-hmm. They're moving to different companies and organizations. They're starting, they're doing their own startups mm-hmm. because people are literally tired of not being able to live the life that they want and help contribute to, yeah. you know, companies and organizations. They are really, really fed up with it. And if you're not going to provide flexibility and in a way for people to really live their lives to the fullest, they're going to bounce. 
Mm-hmm. It's too much. It is, it is a lot. So yeah, so we, we come on here to say, you know, find those pockets of energy, that time that you need. If you're in that situation or, you know, a, another creative outlet, maybe it's changing where you are, your environment. It could be all of that. So all of those things are like on the table, you know, to consider because it it is a lot. It is an energy sucker, as, as they say. It's like, it's just pulling at you so, so much. I have a weekly, yes, we do agree. I have a weekly virtual movie night with a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And we're going on about two years now with it. And I love it because I'm forced to sit down <laughs> to watch something. Yay. I'm busy reading and writing all the time. And uh, so I get to enjoy that. And, and when we don't do it, we both recognize that the week felt off feels off Mm -hmm. because we do it on Monday nights and Mm -hmm. Monday is my least favorite day of the week and I'm working (laughs) hard to try to uh, I'm working hard to try to really get that home that in because every day is a glorious day and Mm -hmm. I I need to stop that but it's something from childhood I just always just didn't like Mondays anyway um, we recognize that when we miss or for some reason we couldn't meet that the week was off and it really gives us a sense of renewal energy for that week to come just to be able to take a mental break Mm -hmm. and enjoy a movie with a friend and it's virtual if you've never tried it before it's so much fun you can do it through amazon prime you can do it through netflix and there's a movie chat box and it really feels like you're in a theater room together you don't see each other so you could be in your pjs Mm -hmm. and you chat about the movie and the person that starts it can pause it if you wanted to, you know, and take the time to talk. Um, But it's so much fun. And and, and now I look forward to it. Like that's like Mondays doesn't bother me as much because I'm like, oh, wow, I got movie night at night. Yeah. And then I also have a friend now that we started talking every week during the pandemic. And then when the world opened up, we kind of not, our schedules didn't mesh up and she lives in Singapore. So that's a whole nother day. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. so we were trying to get back together. So now we're doing Mondays, um, early morning. I get to chat with her for 30 minutes on video chat on FaceTime from Singapore. And um, that's exciting to look forward to. So just little sparks, like Linda was saying, anything that sparks joy that we talked about quite a bit about joy and sparking joy any little thing like that, travel, get a night away, a long bath with candles, um, just anything that you can use to just uh, jumpstart yourself, Mm -hmm. you know, because I just watched, uh, Junk TV is fun too. I just watched, uh, the Heart of Chat had me just complete. Oh, Young, Famous, and African? Yes. Yes. Now I'm starting catching up with them on the selling Tampa yes trash tv is good to unplug and yeah and just you know take you away from reality for a little bit and then get you back on track too so mm-hmm. you got to use all of these things at our fingertips we do we do I love that it variety <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um for me and like I said it's, it's a little more challenging to like create space for myself but I'm trying and I have a a friend a a lady I'm working with right now who is trying to help me be more intentional and mindful about you know the things that I do the funny part is like just in talking to her she's like a life coach so think uh I I told y'all ladies I think of like AJ Johnson Mm -hmm. if y'all know you know what she does um she's also she does fitness stuff but she also mostly like works with people on like getting their life together and so working with Kim it was funny because we were talking and um I knew like the things that I was saying, like it, of course it doesn't make sense for me to say that, you know, oh, I have lower expectations for other people, but super high expectations for myself. Like she was like, why does that doesn't make any sense? Or like, you know, I will give of myself to other people, even when I know I'm tired and I won't make time for myself because people need me. And she was like, and I said, I know it don't make sense, but I am aware of it. And I think that's the first part because a lot of people aren't even aware that they do these things. I'm very self-aware. Therapy has helped me with that in, the, <laughs> in that way. Um, but just even just carving out like that hour to sit and talk with her about what I'm going through or making a plan for myself has been helpful because 
I normally wouldn't have. I would have felt that was something else to do for somebody else. And mm-hmm. so even that was like a step in the right cool. direction. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you need that where there's just a, an hour to sit and talk with a friend or someone else that can kind of help, you know, give you some words of encouragement or wisdom or whatever. But one of the things that she was talking about, and we spoke a little bit about, you know, transitioning and we're going from, you know, Linda, you driving into the office and you might be going to a track meeting and then you might be coming home to get yeah. back to work. And then we might be having a call for the heart to chat. Like, it's just all these things, but just giving yourself some space in between there somewhere mm-hmm. to just pause and breathe and take a minute yeah. for yourself. Um, sure. That's what I'm working on for like, like, coming up <clears throat> and something that you all could implement too is just creating some type of transition time for yourself even if it's you know before you come home or whether it's before you go to the next meeting setting mm-hmm. aside some time in there to just stop and breathe or to finish up something that's like lingering yeah. um, you don't have to go home and get back on the computer but um just creating space for yourself to just do something that you love to do that's a, that's a great point. I'm so guilty of that because uh, I do work in the office now quite a bit. And, you know, first thing I do, I leave home, you know, at 630. I'm in the office till at least 5, 530. And a lot of times I do come home and get right back on the computer after working such a long day because mm-hmm. I never finish things. I'm in meetings all day. Sometimes I'm, I'm in meetings, maybe six to 10 meetings a day. So six is actually a good day when you start getting into. I remember where you used to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it would be 10 back to back Zoom meetings. You know, now it's it's becoming it's maybe six or seven meetings, which I'm like, people still say that's not a win. That's not success. I'm like, it is me, when you used to be yeah, when you ten meetings a day, you know, so I, it, you know, so I'm trying to carve in that time, too. And then Linda used to be like, I had 60 meetings this week. I'm like, ain't no way. Yeah. Yeah. I had I think I came here one day and I told you ladies I had 22 meetings in three days and that wasn't even the full you know week and it was just a lot and it's still a lot I mean I think now that they're folding us back in a bit they're giving us a little bit of space because now we're in person you have to be able to transition Mm -hmm. from office to office to do the meetings but then then I still have zoom meetings even though I'm at work I I may still have meetings on zoom but then have to get up and run literally run down the hall to an in-person meeting so Mm -hmm. it's just so we're still just in that flux and I'm gonna tell you those three days that I was at work week before last I was so tired my friend she was laughing at me she she said I'm cracking up I I was tired I felt like I ran a marathon Mm -hmm. I hadn't walked that much in two years and all of a sudden (laughs) I'm back and thrust back into the office and I'm just like oh my god this is crazy Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. yeah I know one of the other things we talked about was just how like um like looking at when you're looking at all the different areas of your life and I was looking at like where I put like spirituality and creativity and they both are really Mm -hmm. low and Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how closely tied my connection to my spirituality and my creativity are um because when I don't have energy for one it's usually because of the lack of one of those both like I feel like both if I'm lacking in energy both of those two things diminish at the same time equally and um it's so easy when you're helping others or you're doing stuff for other people. And it's something that you love to do. It's easy to look at the things that you love to do for yourself, like being creative or taking time to be spiritual or to focus on your spirituality practices or rituals. Um, It's so easy to talk yourself out of the things that you love to do naturally. Like, you know, like I was almost like, I have several times probably almost talked myself out of doing photography. Like, I mean, it's okay. Like I don't have to do it or whatever, you know, I'll just do something else and I'll pick up the camera when I feel like it. Um, but I did a photo shoot for a friend recently, um, this past week and it just felt really good. It felt really nice to take that time and do it, but it's so crazy how easily we could talk ourselves out of like our stuff and doing Mm -hmm. stuff for ourselves that we know we love to do. Um, yeah. And so being like, we don't have time for it. Yeah, we don't have time for it. And I can let myself down. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's easier to do that than to let someone else down. And in reality, you know, um, I mentioned this before in the past, like one of the things that I like to do in the morning, the reason why I wake up so early is not just because I want to be able to um, be ready for my day and get my mind together and all of those things. 
but to try to uh, to put something in there creatively mm-hmm. also helps me get my day started. I don't know why I did this this morning, but I woke up this morning. I opened up my drawer next to me and I just organized it real quick. Oh yeah, I was like, Feels it great. wasn't something I was planning on doing, but it just it just it sparked oh, me natural. Yeah, yeah. to do it, and it it felt good. Um, doing something creative every day, like it's important for me. It's a, I can't, I die a slow death without, without creativity. <laughs> and so I know exactly what you mean. You are me and I am you. I, right. I you <laughs> we are like looking yeah. in the mirror at each other. Seriously. Mm-hmm. We, we move in this very similar and we have to feed ourselves in a very similar fashion. Yeah, yeah. That's that's true. very, very top spirituality. Those two are, I got to keep those. If mm-hmm. I don't have those, I don't have nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like creativity is different for everybody, right? It doesn't mean that you have to be painting, that you have to be writing a book, that you have to be, you know, singing or dancing. Like there are so many other things that can fall under that creativity spectrum for it just for you, like, you know, based on what you like to do. Like cooking for somebody could be their creative, yeah. their mm-hmm. creative outlet. You know what I mean? Um, gardening or whatever. Like there's so many different ways to feed your soul um, than just or like you said, organize like that for me. Organization, I love it. Yeah, That's like why it feels good. <laughs> That's the why it's the easiest thing for me to recognize is when my yeah. space is unorganized. That's the first thing I notice um, about like like oh I'm feeling I'm. I'm not really taking care of myself because I've let my space get unorganized because I love it like I was a kid that had like you remember those big cd books oh I, yeah yeah I was in alphabetical order I love it so oh yeah the whole book I knew exactly what was missing well what you said you used to there. do it for your brother too yeah, I, I organized his books. stuff I organized yes. his book for him and I felt because when he went overseas um he had left his cd book with me and I had my own big one too like it was like some big thick ones and so I organized his for him I organized my mom I'm the one my mom would call me like come organize my closet for me and I would do that color code make sure stuff was that's why I, the home edit I love that show I'm like this is my Yay. life like if I'd have known then what I know now that Marie Kondo and the home edit ladies like that this was a career I could have been doing like organization for a job they had to craft it into to a career so right. you know it wasn't respected. Well, no, it was back then that's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> respect. <laughs> that's what I say. When you kid, yeah, like kids are very like creative and they do a lot of things. And like now, like you can foster that. It. You have to foster mm-hmm. because they can got to jump on it. They can create any lane mm-hmm. that they want to. Mm-hmm. Very true. I often very speak true. about, uh, and I mentioned this in my. Miss My Sax workshop when we talk about the inner child work and things like that. I mentioned that I always wanted to be a model. And growing up, that was a time where they didn't view modeling as a way of life. You can't make any money. That's just Mm -hmm. a hobby, you know, but I never saw it that way. Mm -hmm. I saw where the industry is today. I saw that back then when I was a teenager. I just had that vision that it was mm-hmm. going to be really big business. It wasn't just going to be for 10 miles. You know, yeah. at the time it was 10, 20 miles that right. got all the jobs and all the ads and everything. I'm like, no, this is going to be big. This is going to be huge, mm-hmm. you know, and but you have to have that support. You know, you have to have a team yeah. that supports that and that will, you know, promote you into that. So I speak a lot about your zone of genius and I speak a lot about if you do have children and you see that they're into something, push push on it. Give them everything mm-hmm. and let them try so many different things. It doesn't mean that they're a jack of all trades. It just means that they need to explore to see what really, what really, you know, what they really take mm-hmm. to do. And if they're mm-hmm. not exposed to it early, how are they going to know? And then once mm-hmm. they got to go to college and then they have to work and do all of the things, now their creativity is stifled because now they're into the rigmarole of living life like everyone else. And it's it's so hard because I feel like I'm like I'm a creator, but I'm also, you know, solid into the, you know, mm-hmm. into the intellect and taking care of business too. Mm-hmm. And it's so hard today to wear all of these hats and and try to really push for the one you really want, which is my creativity. That's all I want to do all day, every day. And but, um, yeah. Which is why I hate when 
and I said hate when um right. it's a word parents tell their kids and a lot of us it's because that's what how we were raised but basically like oh well you're too old to be playing with baby dolls are you too old to be playing video games are you too old to be coloring like you know it's time for you to grow up and like and you take that away from them right mm-hmm. like oh you can't do this because you're a kid I mean, cause you're, you know, you're getting at a certain age and you can't do that anymore. And I feel like speaking of like renewed energy, that is how they decompress, whether it's coloring, yeah. whether it's organizing their little toys that they just love to just look at sometimes, or mm-hmm. whether it's playing a video game, um, like grown men, they come home and women, my daughter <laughs> come home from <laughs> work. As a gamer. Your and daughter's a gamer. They yeah, decompress. Yeah, my son. Mm-hmm. That's how they decompress. And imagine just mm-hmm. stripping that away from them, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's like you know you being an adult and somebody it's a creative telling outlet. you, Linda, right. you you can't you you can't drink no more coffee in the morning. Oh, you just need girl. to stop because you're getting too old yeah. to be drinking coffee. It's time for you to let that go. <laughs> no, yeah, I'll be no that. good for nobody. And like, I feel right. like you gotta let pe- let your kids naturally transition. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Into yeah. other activities or things, you can introduce new things to them. But I don't. I think like just taking a girl and packing all her baby dolls up and being like you know mm-hmm. you two old to be playing with dolls like yeah. I know grown women that still collect porcelain dolls that mm-hmm. do the miniature yeah. houses like it doesn't yeah. mean that they're not developing you know what I'm saying y'all know I love miniatures and I'm <laughs> Not to get a major collection going on. My sister and I love miniatures. And one of our goals in the future is to have a miniature museum mm. where we can encase all of our miniatures and people could just come and take a look at what we've collected over the years. Mm-hmm. And that's part of, you know, and if you don't have to have children to love to do things like that, to stay connected with your inner child, to spark that joy. You know, that's another way of renewal energy. Like you said, having a coloring book next to you, or yeah. I like to color with, a, I like to color with the color pencils. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. color pencils. Um, my mismatched socks book is actually color pencils. Color pencils. I, yeah. I chose watercolors at first, but when I got a couple of illustrations, I didn't like the way it looked on the page. So I mm-hmm. decided to go with the color pencils a little bit more defined. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, inner child play is mm-hmm. a really great way to stay renewed and connected and grounded. Yeah, it's true. So that's yeah. why I said look, look for something that's like, you know, when you're when your energy is low or you're feeling a little disconnected from yourself like what is it that you let go of that is just you you know what I'm saying like for me it was like anything creative I haven't touched my paint I haven't touched my camera like oh and heartbeats why does Jeanette Jeanette knows how to draw (laughs) (laughs) y'all I'm and I mean, poquito. no, no, no <laughs> poquito, nothing. You remember no poquito. the drawing she showed us yes. when she went yes. home? Yeah. Went back to her house and she opened up a box full. And I said, you drew that? You drew that? <laughs> yes, I she knows how to draw. I'd be forgetting. Yes. Hone in on that. Yeah. yeah. On the things, you know? So I look at Maddie. She's like the jack of all creative traits. She has tried everything. Now she's doing diamond painting. Oh so my God. Little, that is so little, amazing. It's the die. She did one for her dad's birthday. And I was like, oh, it's so nice. She made me one. She, she's she got pee now. She's like sort of turned it into a low key business because she's doing a couple of things in school. She always does it. I said, oh, she said, mommy, can we go to Michael's? I'm like, oh, okay, where we going? And she's like, come out with all this stuff. Oh, so-and-so paid me to do a, a, a diamond paint. I was like, hi, my little hustler. That's right. You, you know? got to get that money up front. Yeah, that's right. She is funny. But yeah, she's done everything. Cheerleading, basketball. She played flag football. She, now she's that's why practice. she's so happy. Yeah, And we need to happy, take a yeah. page out of our children's book mm-hmm. and to continue mm-hmm. to, to do those things and negate all of that stuff where people mm-hmm. say you're there's a way to be a mature adult and still do fun, fun. things. Mm-hmm. Fun things, yeah. I just yeah. let her go. Like my schedule, I, I it flows with her. I'm like, okay, you're having you have a track meet from April to July. All right, we'll make it work, you know. But also still looking at myself, still put that where I said earlier about pouring into myself still a little bit, right? So going to the track meet, great, but maybe I'll get me a couple hours or a night to myself and then 
be at the track meet with her, you know? Mm. So it's, it's sort of that sort of harmony that you create for yourself yeah. too. And also still allowing your kids to have that creative outlet. I love what you said, Jeanette, about how do you prioritize your spirituality and your creativity? Great question for our heartbeats, for our listeners. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you prioritizing? How are you doing it? I think that would be a good follow-on. Yeah. Question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so I'm working it, right. What areas do there's a lot of different areas that we need to fill. So so Jeanette pointed out, she recognizes that those are her two, which we share the same two. Mm-hmm. Those two need to be filled to the brim or overflowing so that the other areas could be taken care of. So looking at what is and, and you could tie that into love language too. If cooking is your love language, you know, make more time for that. Maybe you can create a meal once a week that you can really take the time and have 18 ingredients and do all of the things. And mm-hmm. it, it maybe it will, you know, it not maybe it will spark and spread fire for the rest of the week for you to be able to do the things that we don't necessarily want to do. If that yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. I love that. I, yeah. So I'm, and just so y'all know, like y'all know, like when we create these episodes and come up with these titles, it's usually because one of us is either one or all of us has either dealt with it, are dealing with it, have come out the other side of it. It's also <laughs> true. It's like, it's, it's, our episodes are very connected to who we are. And it's never just a, oh, well, I think, I think the world needs to know this because they messing up. Like, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't come from right. a place that we know it all. We've done it all. It's like, we're working through this and I, I've found some great information and I want to share it with everybody else. And then, you know, also maybe get some, some insight from y'all to, to help me at the same time. Um, we didn't create this podcast because we're perfect. You know what I'm saying? We created it because it came from a genuine place of conversation and vulnerability that we've had with each other. And we just want to, you know, spread that with everybody else to mm-hmm. make space for yourself as women, especially women at the, at the age that we are the very young, um, mature season age that we are all at. <laughs> um, hey, 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 a lot of us I'm spicy have, pepper, baby, oh, <laughs> cayenne pepper over there. I'm, it's a little kid in my daughter's <laughs> class named Cayenne and her mama calls him Pepper and I don't know if his name is Cayenne Pepper or if his, they call him Pepper but his name is Cayenne okay. we're just gonna say his name is Cayenne Pepper okay all right we're gonna go he's with spicy so one. he's gonna be explosive oh uh, mm-hmm. yes but um to, and I forgot what I was gonna say talking about about our ages um yeah we've we've lived a lot of life and we've experienced a lot of things and in that living a lot of times we often as women are taught to forget about ourselves and be the martyr and be humble I was watching and I'm a what somebody don't forget what y'all were gonna say I was watching a home edit and our girl from um, I don't know if y'all watch Orange is the New Black but her name is Tasty and Tasty was on uh, her name on Orange is the New Black is Tasty. I do not know her real name, which is sad, so sad. But she's a young black female actress, amazing. She's won a Grammy and like she's done a lot of great work. And so they were there to edit her home and they were like, you have all these beautiful like paintings of yourself that people have done and sent or you've purchased. And why don't you put them up? And she was like, oh, you know, my mom taught me humility. And I never want to be braggadocious. And so mm-hmm. I feel like it's really vain to put pictures of myself up in my house. And they <laughs> and she was like, my Grammy is somewhere Grammy in this closet <laughs> because putting this Grammy out on the shelf is me bragging. Mm-hmm. And they said, no, this is you celebrating mm-hmm. yourself, celebrating your accomplishments. And it's just, you know, like we have to do an episode about it or maybe find somebody to come speak on it. But you keep coming way. back to it. That's that why you word, see my he, face. That that's word, why I'm laughing at Sean. I was like, I have all that stuff on the wall. We <laughs> have got to do a podcast on that. Because it keeps he, coming back. We've been taught yeah. to be humble is mm-hmm. not what Ugh. humility really is. Guilty as charged. What There's a difference between that? what you just shared. <laughs> and that's why your energy is low because you ain't even been able to celebrate yourself. Yeah, and we're afraid to because we think somebody I'm not allowed. say something to you. Oh, she thinks she all that because she, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I know I'm guilty. I don't share nothing. How many times I'll be on Marco Polo talking <laughs> about like, like, this girl is dropped in gorgeous. That's why Shana was oh, laughing. That's the why they going crazy over her. 
How many times I'll be on Marco Polo? And I'm just the opposite. I'm like, I'm going here looking crazy. I'm like, my hair. Oh my God. So yeah, (laughs) working. It's a work in progress. Yeah. It's just being authentic. And and if we can't be real with ourselves, who who is going to celebrate you like you? Let's start there. Mm -hmm. No one. No one's going to celebrate you like Mm -hmm. you. No, definitely sure. not. It's, it's definitely and we have to start, perfect. and we talked about this in the celebrate episode, but like the power of celebrating yourself, like you have to start cheering for yourself the same with the same energy that you cheer for other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Period. Yep. We can celebrate everybody else, but don't you think you deserve that too? And it's so hard when people, and I are guilty, like when people be trying to give me compliments and say, no, I'm like, oh God, please stop talking oh, about don't me. Don't do that. <laughs> We just yeah. had a graduation for uh, my entrepreneurs um, the end of March and my facilitator grabbed the mic and was like saying all these very lovely things about me, which I'm super grateful for. But it was in front of this room for like 75 plus people. And I was like, okay, enough about me. Can we go back to the graduates? And my um, new CEO, oh, he was like, I think it's really amazing that she took the time in front of all those people and said the words that she did and poured back into you because he was like it's needed and more people need to do that for other people in front of a whole crowded room of people not just he said it's, it's great one-on-one too but sometimes people need to be celebrated in front of the masses and yeah. I was like okay thank you I agree with that I agree but it's great <laughs> that we have the Shauna's and the Maddie's in in our lives because I think for me I've passed that on to Miles where I think it was even like our last episode when we did the celebration and we were celebrating Randolph making the championship win I was like oh yeah. okay, enough about that you know that's where Miles gets it from but Maddie is like what oh no we doing this like she went in Maddie's red carpet water. she red she carpet is. she's girl. like oh we ready no you're getting this outfit red mom red carpet ready I was like, okay, so that's why she was your child. This is why she's your child because she's bringing all of that to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the gift that she brings to you. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was laughing at Shauna still because I could see all your pictures when Jeanette was talking about the lady didn't want to put up all her pictures. I'm like, uh-uh, uh-huh. no, Shauna being there. I cannot wait for pictures. our headquarters. The Heart of Tail yes. headquarters? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The paintings that's going to be up there of us all through oh the place. Goodness. I'm still gonna Come be like on. this. No, I don't want to look at myself mm-hmm. <laughs> be like this. Danielle, Brooks, I wanted to say name. something to compliments, yeah. Jeanette and Linda. Compliments. Mm-hmm. Linda get room of receiving compliments. I am a graduate. I'm so proud of myself. I am a graduate of being able to receive compliments, taking it, owning it, and saying yes. I'm still I in class. I'm, I'm still uh-uh. in class. I'm in 101. It's okay. It's taken me a Let lot, a lot, lot of, a lot we, of years. We might be in 103. Are we one of, 201, 201? 201. Okay, maybe. I don't know. That's a stretch for me. I know, like okay. 102. It's okay. It's a work in progress. <laughs> it's taken me a lot of years to get here, though. It's so up, hard to just shut up and say thank you. It is. <laughs> I, like, I grew oh, up with a family. You're cute, too. You know? <laughs> exactly. I grew up with a family that does that. They toss it back out. Mm -hmm. don't take the compliment they always toss it back out so that's the way I grew up so I learned to just mimic that you know Mm -hmm. oh this is what you do there we go back to don't want to be vain don't want to be you know this humility thing is all goes back to that and Mm -hmm. I had to learn that every time I did that I was taken away from myself and I didn't you know really realize that but I was I was taken away from myself it was like just take the compliment and my husband helped me a lot my late husband helped me a lot with this that's why I graduated the way I did because I had been working on it for a lot of years and he would get on me all the time whenever I would do that I would reflect or if somebody said I had something nice I had to explain where I got it from what discount rack I got it from I don't have to go through all of that all Mm -hmm. I need to do is say thank you and reflect and and be one with that yeah and so taking me a lot of years but I'm here in Class fact, I've been in North Carolina a year. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in North Carolina a year and I've had a lot of people, strangers come up to me and give me compliments and I would own it. And then they would come back and say, I like the way you just took that compliment. And I'm like, oh, if they only knew how long it took me to get here. <laughs> yeah. it was, you know, it was just really nice to be acknowledged mm-hmm. that I'm actually, you know. Shauna is the evolved Sagittarius and I am the evolving Sagittarius. I'm getting there. <laughs> we are a mirror there. image. I was where you were and you, you know, we, we yeah. exchange a lot of things and you have a lot of things in you that I want to, that yeah. I'm evolving into. 
So okay. that's why I always say you is me, I is you. Yeah. We yeah. the people. Yeah. Yes, 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 ladies. So this is really great. It was, yeah. So any final like um just quick tips or one hitters of like things that people can do to like our listeners, not people, our mm-hmm. listeners, our heartbeats can do to um renew their energy once they recognize it and then kind of live in that space a little bit more too. Yeah, I would say first, listen to this episode. The title alone draws you in. Sit down, listen to this episode, watch us. I mean, I think there's definitely, I know that there's definitely value in that. That's Mm -hmm. like your first things right there. I mean, so many gems being dropped. Ask yourself the questions. What do you prioritize Mm -hmm. in your life? And yeah, we all have things going on, hybrid kids, you know, Mm -hmm. spouses, husbands, girlfriends, (laughs) boyfriends, whatever you know, what prioritize you. And then from there, work, work towards your energy and that continuous energy for Mm -hmm. yourself. I would Um, say go back to figuring out which cups need to be filled up that makes you happy the most so that it will spill over into the other areas that you may not necessarily want to do, but need energy to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to say a big thing that I had to do this week and it was hard because I have, I'm going to say this here heartbeats because I've had friends in my life that have told me this and I don't ever agree, but I have control issues. So no. <laughs> not you. I know really? you would never believe that I have control issues. So <laughs> one of the things I had to do was to remove myself from being in control of a situation and having everything exactly the way I want it. And I, you know what I recognize of what how it would allow me is because I wanted it this way and I said it was supposed to be this way. And didn't I tell y'all that I wanted this and didn't I say this? I had to really remove myself from the situation and say, is it good? Yes. Is it perfect? No. But will it give you a, a different like give you basically the core things of what I needed this one thing to be like, you know what I'm saying? It's going to bring me a sense of peace, some uh, sense of connection with my family, allowing them some freedom. And I had to just let it go. And so sometimes some of the things we needed to renew our energy is to let go of the things that we're trying to control because everything doesn't have to be exactly the way you want it. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it, as long as it does the job that you need it to do is the end in the end the core thing that that whatever it is you're trying to control are you still able to to do and as you know achieve the thing that you wanted to achieve as a result of it then you got then let it go and let it be and stop trying to control the whole full outcome of it um and so i had to just step away and then hand it over to my husband and be like you got this because that's my problem because I don't ask for help we both have the same problem yeah I don't ask for help and so then I want to control the whole thing and it's okay to let people help you yeah it is okay it It doesn't have to always be your way you don't always have to be right that's a hard lesson that um I had to learn I'm not I'm not I'm not fully graduated from that either Jeanette Um, but that's a hard lesson that I had to go through when I couldn't walk and I had to take care of Lorenzo and I had to have help Mm-hmm. That was a very hard pill to swallow. Yeah. Know, to go to the bathroom, to get out the bed. When you have to go to all the way to that extreme, it's like, okay, you need to really get this. You need to really get this <laughs> under control. Yeah, because, it causes you more frustration in the end. Because yeah. it causes you yeah. more frustration. I'm doing a lot better. Um, but the last three years, I've done my best in that area. I'm still working. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, Linda, do you have anything else you want to share before before I kick it to us? Oh, no, this was great. I mean, I think there are a lot of gems in here and just, you know, take these, get get your energy, continue to work towards (laughs) it. Um, That renewal is key for life. So that's what I would say. So before I kick it to Shauna, um, real quick, don't forget that we have a membership group. If you are interested in being a part of our membership and continuing the conversation, um, go to our website, theheartofchat.com and click on our membership page and become a member and continue the conversation with us. Get um, weekly, we do weekly videos in there. I do a gratitude Wednesday video and we, we talk through some different ways of staying grateful. Shauna does a ref, um, 
not a reflection. She does a, it is a reflection Fuego Friday question. Fuego Friday question every Friday. And then in between seasons, Linda, um, outside of posting like our weekly podcast in there for everyone, she also posts um, some motivational things for us on Monday. So just stay connected with us in that way. If you're interested, we would love to have you join us. Um, so many more perks, but you can find all of that on our website. And if you love what we do and what we talk about here, and um, there's a friend that you want to share it with, please share the episode. And also please go, if you listen to us on um, iTunes or Spotify, um, go to those applications, leave us a rating and a review because it allows us to get this message out to more women who need it. So um, if you could do that for us, that would be greatly appreciated. And the virtual tour coming up. Oh, yes. When, when is virtual this workshop. Airing? The virtual workshop. Yes. So that is Saturday, April 30th. Mm-hmm. Yep. From 10 to 10 a.m. to 1230 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please, please, please join us. Also on our website, it'll also be in the show notes. You can register right there. And yeah, we look forward to seeing you all. So we're we're very excited about it. Yes, awesome. Shauna, do you want to take us out? Yes, thank you for listening. Thank you, Heartbeats. You can find us all over the world, as we say every week on every single platform known to man. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> come back What's next that? week and every week everybody because it's going to be fuego baby come back yes bye. thank you ladies bye